Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts, and learn more at slate.com slash moneymind. Hey, everybody. Guess what? Ask Me Another is headed down to Dallas. Join us and special guests for a live taping of our show on September 26th at the Majestic Theater. Tickets and info at amatickets.org. Hey, here's a great way to listen to Ask Me Another on your commute or while making dinner, NPR One. It's an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio, and it's full of news, podcasts, including Ask Me Another. So whenever you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it in your app store, NPR One. From NPR and WNYC, live from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. Ask me another. Here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. We have a great show. Ten lucky contestants are here to play our nerdy games, but only one will be our Ask Me Another grand prize winner with a prize provided by our VIP guests. Who are the stars in the latest chapter of the Evil Dead franchise, the new television series, Ash vs. Evil Dead? <laughs> now, if I had to choose between being a zombie or an Evil Dead deadite, I'm going with deadite. Right? They're clever, they're cunning, deceptive. They're not like dumb zombies. And to become a deadite, the sure way is, of course, to date Ash Williams. Any woman who hooks up with Ash ends up being possessed by evil. True, he would have to kill you afterwards, but hey, we all have that one who got away. <laughs> Our VIPs are Bruce Campbell and Lucy Lawless. First game is titled Roll the Dice, and here to play it are Sarah Vella and Jacob Kramer. <laughs> Jacob, have you ever reviewed anything on Yelp or Amazon or uh, any of those sites? I think this shawarma place I used to go to in Union Square, they said they would give me free shawarma if I reviewed them, and that was a good reason to review them on Yelp. Favorably. <laughs> Favorably. And did they give you free shawarma? I think it was extra falafel balls in my shawarma or something. Wow. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. <laughs> How about you, Sarah? Have you ever reviewed anything online? I'm not really a reviewer, and I, I kind of think Yelp is terrible. But uh... I, You know what? I hear all these people clapping in your point of view, but I know you people. You are like me. You just write the reviews in your head all day long. It's fair. <laughs> well, as you know, there are thousands of board games that are released every year. How do you know which ones are fun to play? You read the Amazon reviews on them, especially the less favorable ones, so you can figure it out. So in this round, we are actually going to read actual reviews of popular board games, and all you have to do is tell us what game we are talking about. Let's go to our house musician, Jonathan Colton, for an example. Here's a review. I don't like the fact that this game came with 1K and 1J and no Zs. That is a review of the board game Scrabble. Although technically it's more a review of the specific box that they received. <laughs> you know what happened? Absent a few letters. So that's an actual review. You see, people have major problems. <laughs> so ring in when you know the game, and the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Here we go. When I bought this game, I didn't realize I'd be teaching my children how to get away with murder. <laughs> By implication, the rules of the game teach young minds how to plan and carry out a crime and then evade detection. <laughs> Jacob. Clue. Yes, you are right. I have played Clue. This seems like an amazing version of it. Uh, <laughs> because I don't remember teaching people how to carry out murders. No. Or how to evade detection. Or how to you know? evade, yeah. Unless they mean like you put the weapon in an envelope and leave it in the middle of the yeah. table. <laughs> I like that they make it sound like, and after that, candlestick murders went up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> 
There is nothing worse than a game in which the winner is often obvious in the first 10 minutes, but lasts another hour and 50 minutes. If your opponent lands on premium spaces on his first two trips around the painfully monotonous board and you do not, well, you are screwed. Sarah. Monopoly. Oh, yeah. It takes a good 15 minutes minimum to erect a stack of sticks, and then after two, maybe three moves, it topples over. (laughs) Then my wife laughs at me and walks off to go read a book or something. (laughs) Jacob. Jenga. Jenga is correct. It says a lot more about the reviewer than it does about yeah. the game. No, no, no. Yeah, this is not a Jenga problem. No, I agree. <laughs> My 11-year-old, who is an artist and super smart, couldn't play this. The things they had us draw were so old or so unbelievably hard that we had to give up. Big disappointment. <laughs> Sarah. Pictionary. Yeah. <laughs> The purpose of the game is global domination, a playful concept that in the real world has been promoted by bloody warfare and atrocities (laughs) as far back as recorded history goes. For school-aged children, this game interferes with the cognitive process in confusing and politically corrosive ways. Jacob. Risk. That is correct, yeah. Obviously. (laughs) All right, this is your last clue. Terrible game. No one can play it, not even my husband, and he is a surgeon. (laughs) Sarah. Operation. Operation is correct. (laughs) Not every surgeon finished at the top of their class. Let's go to our puzzle guru, John Chinesky. John, how did our contestants do? We have a tie. Jacob and Sarah, here's your tiebreaker question. If you enjoy games of blind luck, then this game is right up your alley. You call out a number and a letter based on a grid you have in front of you. As a board game, it's pretty boring. Jacob. Bingo. No, not bingo. Sarah, take a guess. Uh, Oh, is it Battleship? It is Battleship. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, you win this game. We will see you at our Ask Me One More final round at the end of the show. Congratulations. Our next game is called Trick or Tweet, and our contestants are Hattie Taylor and Martha Brzezinski. Martha, are you active on Twitter? I am. Do you follow any celebrities because you need to know what they're up to and how they're tweeting? There was a Broadway actress who used to take Ambien and then tweet. That was fun. (laughs) (laughs) It was like a fever dream or, yeah. That's Fantastic. Great. All right. Hattie, are you a tweeter? I am. What's the context of your, uh, your tweet verse? I mean, I definitely follow celebrities, so sometimes responding to what they say. And okay. And, <laughs> and why do you follow celebrities? Well, it depends on the person. Some people, because I'm interested in what they do, if it's a sports player of a team that I like, then there are some people that I follow just to kind of see the crazy that happens. Yeah. Or like parody accounts. Like I follow um, Gary Busey's mugshot. <laughs> sure. So... Well, as we know, Twitter is much more than a horrible time suck that destroys your productivity. It is an effective way to learn which celebrities are a few characters short of 140. (laughs) In the brains department. Yeah. Yeah. So in this game, Jonathan and I will read you a pair of tweets. One is the real tweet from a famous celebrity, and one we have made up. And you just have to tell us which one is real. But if you guess wrong, your opponent gets the point. So don't buzz indiscriminately. He said sternly. (laughs) Be careful. Suddenly making it not very much fun. (laughs) All right, let's play. Which of these casual observations is a real tweet from Kanye West? Uh, Is it, people say Vladimir Putin is dangerous, but trust me, I get his intensity. Or is it, Do you know where to find marble conference tables? I'm looking to have a conference. Not until I get the table, though. Martha. The first one. No, I'm sorry. It is the second one. It's the marble conference table, too. Both pretty plausible. 
Which of these lofty pronouncements is a real tweet from Donald Trump? <laughs> Sorry, losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. So please don't feel stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. Or is it? Stop asking me about Star Wars versus Star Trek. Both are for nerds and babies. Watch Goodfellas like a man. <laughs> Martha. It's the first one. It is the first one. Losers yeah. and haters. That's correct. That's how I start all my tweets. Hey, losers and haters. Hey, losers and haters. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these pieces of quality journalism is a real tweet from Katie Couric? If you are looking for a good costume, glue gun an empty egg carton to a headband, and then wear something sexy, including fishnets. Eggs over easy. <laughs> or is it this one? For a classy party look, Float votive candles in the guest bathroom sink or toilet. <laughs> Hattie. I want it to be the second one. It is not the second <laughs> one. I'm sorry. It's the first one. It's the costume idea. It's the, the real tweet. Which of these is a real tweet from actor and star spawn Jaden Smith? You would have to eat five apples today to get the same nutritional value as an apple from 1950. Hashtag fallow. Or is it this one? You stole your dog from his family and still he loves you anyway. Hashtag love is bigger than species. Martha. The second one. No, I'm sorry. It's the first one. It's the one about apples. They both seem equally possible. possible. So possible. I know. All right, this is your last clue. Which of these deep thoughts is from pop star and philosopher Britney Spears? <laughs> Does anyone think global warming is a good thing? I love Lady Gaga. I think she's a really interesting artist. <laughs> or is it? Ever fantasize about living in a Walmart? It's got everything, y'all. Martha. The second one. No. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. It's the global warming slash Lady Gaga one. Yeah. That's the way she tweets, man. She just opens up her head and just shakes everything it out. out. <laughs> Puzzle guru, John Chinesky. A lot of hearts were broken this game. Oh. I know, but you know who should feel better is Hattie because she's going to move on to our final round. Way to go, Hattie. <laughs> Coming up, we'll do what we do best, rewrite the lyrics of Pat Benatar's Love is a Battlefield to be about actual battlefields. And I hope you're feeling groovy because Bruce Campbell will be joining us, so give me some sugar, baby. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. A quick shout out to one of our sponsors who brings you this message, Casper. They're an online mattress retailer. And the Casper mattress is designed, developed, and assembled in the USA and obsessively engineered for comfort. They use two technologies, latex foam and memory foam, to give you just the right amount of sink and bounce. And they have a risk-free trial. You can try out your Casper mattress for 100 nights with free delivery and returns, along with a special offer for listeners of this podcast. Use the promo code ANOTHER to redeem $50 towards a Casper mattress. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, it's Guy Raz here from the TED Radio Hour, and I'm really excited to tell you about another podcast I'm hosting. It's called How I Built This, and it's a show about the most amazing innovators and entrepreneurs and the stories behind the companies and movements they built. The show launches on September 12th. You can find it at npr.org slash podcasts on iTunes or on the NPR One app. You're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR and WNYC. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and with me is our house musician, Jonathan Colton, and our puzzle guru, John Chinesky. Our next game is called Musical Reenactments, and here to play it are Leah Yudin and Cliff Fuller. Yeah. 
I would like to know if either of you uh, have gotten into a public fight of any kind. Cliff? Uh, I had a Larry David moment uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning at a Whole Foods. Oh, yeah. Because somebody cut the line when there was no line. Oh, no. And so I actually quickly made my purchase and saw the guy three blocks away and chased him down Broadway <laughs> just so I could tell him what he did wrong. And then it escalated. But no punches were thrown. I just needed him to admit that he did what he did. And did he? Yes. Good. I won. Good. <laughs> Leah, how about you? Uh, nothing like that, but... Um... <laughs> No, I've been yelled at on the subway a fair amount of times. By just, random people? Just by random people. Oh, so you were an innocent victim. I mean, usually. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> Once I didn't move my leg out of the way fast enough. Well, I'm with yeah, the other person really on that one. Yeah. At me. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan? Yeah. Pat Benatar said it when she said, love is a battlefield. I mean. Oh, she said it all, sister. Yeah. It's true. In this game, we have rewritten the lyrics to Love is a Battlefield to describe historic battles and battlefields. <laughs> you have to tell us which ones we're talking about. And for full credit, I would like you to sing it like this. Valley Forge is a battlefield. <laughs> Although, substitute the correct answer instead of Valley Forge. Are you ready? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Here we go. Napoleon. Get off the field, cause you're done This war has been 23 years long Let's make it an ABBA song <laughs> Leah Waterloo is a battlefield That's correct! <laughs> Did you know it the whole way through, or was it the ABBA line? The Avaline helped. Yeah. That's the clincher right there. It's the, it's the song that ended the war, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were like, this song is so beautiful. Let's stop fighting. Pick its charge. High water mark for the grave. A battle has lasted three days. I hope Lincoln makes a speech. Leah. Gettysburg is a battlefield. <laughs> yes. I'm sure Abraham Lincoln would be very proud. He would love it. Okay, back to this dumb song. <laughs> Come on, Cornwallis man, just wave the white flag. Because you know that you're through. The French are on our side. We don't mean to brag. George Washington is better than you. Yeah, could be anything. Yeah. Mm, any hints from our puzzle group, John Chinesky? Well, this is a place in Virginia, and uh, the first syllable of it is very similar to the town that we're in now, New... New... Yeah? Yorktown? Yorktown? Ooh, oh, oh. Ow. <laughs> I forgot it was two, sorry. Okay. I heard one bell. That was Leah, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Leah! <laughs> Yorktown? Yorktown is correct. <laughs> I will say, though, it was perfectly in unison. Yeah. <laughs> we are quite singing beautiful. a song. So. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Find me a flag. Take a photo of us raising one. Statue someday in Arlington. Clint Eastwood will make a film. Leah. Emo Jima is the battle. Yeah, you got it. That one just rolls off the tongue. Really? <laughs> really? Pat Benatar made a big mistake when she didn't actually write this song about battlefields. I know. Wasted time with a metaphor. <laughs> Should have been more clear and direct. Please don't fire Till you see the whites of their eyes We're saving Boston, you guys but The British will win this one Dead silence Leah Lexington and Concord? Uh, mm -hmm. 
it's the right war. <laughs> Cliff. Bunker Hill is a battlefield. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Moral victory. <laughs> Good. John Chinesky, how did our contestants do? It was a hard-fought battle, but Leah, we will see at the Ask Me One More final round at the end of the show. Do you think you can lead a charge against puzzles, trivia, and wordplay? Then go to amatickets.org to take our contestant quiz, and we'll see whether you can conquer our crafty clues. Our VIP has been fighting evil for over 30 years, and us fans will not let him rest. You know him and love him as Ash Williams from the Evil Dead movies, and now the story continues with the new Starz television series, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Please welcome Bruce Campbell. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are so psyched for this new show. What do you think about the fact that horror is so mainstream that the show is not going to be on after midnight? It is going to be on after dinner. I think it's about doggone time. Yeah. Now, was it a pointed decision to go for a television series as opposed to doing another movie sequel? Yes. The economics are, well... Movies are like a one-shot deal. Right. You roll the dice, ha cha cha, <laughs> and you see what happens. And uh, Mr. Sam Raimi makes movies that are several hundred million dollars now. We didn't think another Evil Dead movie needed to be as expensive as Oz the Great and Powerful. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned. You know, the original movie, you know, was financed with grass-cutting money, basically. So you know, <laughs> different story now. Television is just different. You can, get, you can hopefully get an audience to find you before they cancel you. <laughs> With a movie, you don't get that chance. If you don't do the Burger King tie-in, they're not going to find you. And if you spend $200 million on an Evil Dead movie, that's a bad idea. <laughs> it just is. I'm not trying to get myself out of a job. I've only starred in one studio movie, Army of Darkness. The mo yeah, yeah. Where were you in 1991? <laughs> that movie sank like a stone and killed the series. Now there's been 17 reissues of Army oh of Darkness. Goodness. So, and the fans sort of demanded. They more. demanded it. They were very rude over many, many years. <laughs> Sam Raimi was just saying the other day. He goes, "I made these Spider-Man movies." They grossed over several billion dollars. And people go, oh, that's nice. When's the next Evil Dead movie? <laughs> they want Ash, and they want Sam Raimi. So, we got tired of fighting City Hall. <laughs> We're going to give them exactly what they want. I'm too old to do it worth a damn now, but you know, what the hell? <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a shot. My stunt guy's awesome. Yeah. So you and Sam Raimi actually you are both from Royal Oak, Michigan. We were born in Royal Oak at the William Beaumont Hospital. Why That's are you clapping? It was called it was called Royal Joke when I was born oh there. Oh my god. That's where you got flat top haircuts. Now you can't park there. It's too expensive. Now you guys met in junior high but didn't become friends until high I school. I saw him in junior high okay. school. I witnessed him dressed as Sherlock Holmes playing with dolls. He claims later that he was making a movie. <laughs> there was not a camera in sight. And I remember I walked way around him. I'm like, I gotta watch out for that guy. <laughs> and then I was his assistant at bar mitzvahs. Uh, he yes. was a magician at bar mitzvahs. And I was his assistant hung low. <laughs> it's not my name. I didn't make it up. And so This Sam, was high school? Oh, this was last week. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, this was high school-ish. Yeah, it was high school. And the one thing happened one time that changed his life and mine forever in a very bad way. 
he injured me during the routine. I said something, and he goes, no, you fool, and he hit me. And the audience burst into, like, applause, spontaneous applause. <laughs> and a little light bulb went over his head. He's like, if I just punish Bruce Campbell for 30 more years, this is going to be great. <laughs> What was it like for you personally to revisit this character 20 years later? Uh, personally, much more painful. Really? Yeah. The recovery time is sort of non-existent. Um, go to reach for your socks in the morning. You go, what was that all about? If the fans demanded more and more of this series... I would be healthier and healthier and healthier. <laughs> so... I don't want to hear any spoilers about the show at all, but I, I am told... There is blood. There's a sorry little bit of blood. Sorry, sorry, folks, to... Uh, oh, my word. <laughs> I've choked. This season, I've choked and had to hold up my finger and then disgorge a mouthful of blood. I was killing a zombie uh, above me, and gravity will do what it does, and it just... And I'm supposed to be grimacing, right? You can't kill someone like with your mouth closed. You have it's open. I'm I'm killing this demon, and my mouth is open, and and it's the spigot is right above me. So there you go, and it tastes just as crappy as it did in oh. 1979. <laughs> uh, I cannot wait to watch this. I cannot wait to yeah. watch this. Yeah, it's uh. It's, uh, it's just a little over the top. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a tiny bit. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to subject you and your friend and co-star Lucy Lawless to an Ask Me Other challenge later in the show. But right now, we are thrilled that you actually accepted the challenge of helping us out by leading a game with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You need me for this. All right. <laughs> yeah. Bruce Campbell will be playing the part... Of Wink Martindale. Of Wink Martindale. <laughs> Let's welcome our next two contestants, Mark Oppenheimer and Edgar Diaz. Do you guys feel lucky? You should feel lucky. Yeah. So lucky. Good. Now, Mark is a religion reporter for the New York Times. Edgar is the admin associate for the United Methodist Church of the Village in Manhattan. So, so here is an uplifting question for you. What would you put on your tombstone? Mark. <laughs> All his children were vaccinated. <laughs> Pretty good. Edgar? I think this is a lot about me and where I went with that question. Sure. I'm like, tombstone. What do I want in my tombstone? My standard pizza order? Because that was like a pizza slogan <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> and being from Chicago, I would say like deep dish, sausage, pepperoni, mushroom. And it also probably says a lot about how I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Those are excellent, excellent answers. <laughs> so being dead sucks, even if you don't turn into a flesh-eating zombie, but you do have one final chance to make a lasting impression on your tombstone. So in this game, we are going to give you the epitaphs written on gravestones of some famous people, and you just have to tell us who that person is. For an example, let's go to our puzzle guru, John Chinesky. If you look at the tombstone of Baltimore-based writer and poet, you can see the words, Quoth the Raven, Nevermore. That's on the tombstone of Edgar Allan Poe. Obviously. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a question. I'm like, this is easy. <laughs> so, Reagan, when you know the answer, and of course the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show, I will give you the first one. The last song he sang in public, The Best Is Yet To Come, is the epitaph on what member of the Rat Pack? Mark. Dean Martin. I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Edgar, can you steal? Frank Sinatra. That is correct. Oh. Frank Sinatra. I guess, is this me now? This is you. This female founding member of the Algonquin Round Table... Suggested as her epitaph, excuse my dust. Yes. Mark, yes. Mark. Dorothy Parker. That's correct, Dorothy Parker. She was cremated. <laughs> she was. Cool. 
Because men don't make passes at girls in caskets. <laughs> You're going, uh, this is getting very dark. <laughs> this comedian didn't think he'd get any respect, even in the afterlife, as his tombstone reads, There Goes the Neighborhood. Edgar. Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, you got it. This game show guru invented Jeopardy and hosted a talk show. His final sign-off reads, I will not be right back after this message. Mark. Merv Griffin. That's correct. He's on fire. This legendary filmmaker pulled a line from his film, Some Like It Hot, when he put on his headstone, I'm a writer. But then, nobody's perfect. Mark. Mark. Billy Wilder. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is your last question. Let her rip was the epitaph of this airplane actor who liked to keep his whoopee cushions and flatulence machines handy. <laughs> Edgar. Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. Let her rip. Nice. <laughs> Puzzle Guru John Chinesky, how did our contestants do? Well, Ophira, it's a dead heat. We have a tie. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Mark and Edgar, here's your tiebreaker question. As his characters had done hundreds of times before him, who signed off from this world with the words, that's all, folks? Edgar. Mel Blank. Mel Blank is correct. Congratulations, Edgar. You'll be at our Ask Me One More Final Round at the end of the show. And thank you to Bruce Campbell thank you very for being much. amazing. Thank you. Coming up, we'll flip it and reverse it Missy Elliott style, and we'll pit Bruce Campbell against his old friend and co-star Lucy Lawless. And quiz them about all things undead. You won't want to miss it. This is Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Chipotle. For 23 years, they've been committed to sourcing the best, most noble ingredients they can find, prepping them with care and cooking them using simple recipes without the use of artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. They spend hours marinating, seasoning, and pampering the ingredients to perfection. Whether they're hand chopping, hand slicing, hand dicing, or hand mashing, the ingredients at Chipotle get the royal treatment every day. Welcome back to Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and let's welcome our next contestants, Anne Askew Hasek and Jasmine Kaneshiro. <laughs> Anne here has just started writing crosswords. Attempting. Uh, it's, it's going better than it started. Okay. Yes. <laughs> How many have you written? I've written uh, four or five. The first one was completely unsolvable. Um, <laughs> I sent it to my dad and he was like, yeah, no, try again. Um, but, but I think I'm getting there. My goal is to have one published by the end of the year. So. All right. Well, nice. <laughs> now, Jasmine is also very big into the words. I know that you were in the spelling bee. How far did you get? Um, in my second year, I almost got to ESPN. Uh, would you go back again? Um, to observe. To observe. <laughs> All right, well, this game is one of our favorites. It's a homage to Missy Elliott called Flip It and Reverse It. Because every answer is a famous title or phrase backwards. 
Let's go to our puzzle guru, John Janeski, for an example. If I said what long-running BBC show is about Roger Daltrey's time-traveling personal physician, <laughs> you would answer, who, doctor? <laughs> That's Doctor Who backwards. <laughs> So every clue will hint at the regular phrase and its reversal. And the winner will move on to our Ask Me One More final round at the end of the show. Here we go. This classic George Orwell novel is about one solitary cow. <laughs> Anne. Farm animal? No. <laughs> yes! This Michael J. Fox sitcom from the 80s is about a loving collection of related neckwear and bolos. Jasmine. City spin. Oh, that's the other one. But that's not the one we were looking for. Can you steal, Anne? Ty's family. Ty's family. And then the flamboyant cousin, the ascot, shows up. <laughs> In this long-running reality show, Padma Lakshmi discusses what a kitchen's head cook should wear over their torsos. <laughs> Anne. Chef top. Chef top. <laughs> In this 2011 hit song, Adele accuses the listener of enjoying a specific but unnamed human being. <laughs> Anne. You like someone? Yes! <laughs> this exciting cartoon and network series follows Finn and Jake as they learn how to read an analog clock. <laughs> Jasmine. This is just a guess. Adventure time? Oh. Time, oh, time adventure? Yes, time okay. adventure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is your last clue. Find the hidden arrow in the logo for this shipping company run by former FBI agents. Jasmine. X-Fed. That is correct. All right, John Chinesky, Puzzle Guru, how did our contestants do? They did very well, actually. Anne is our winner, though. She's going on to our Ask Me One More final round. <laughs> Let's welcome back our VIPs, Bruce Campbell and his co-star from Ash vs. Evil Dead, Lucy Lawless. For the last time, it's not I, 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 I. <laughs> For goodness sake, it's spelled A L A L A L A L. How did they convince you to do Ash versus Evil Dead? Well, you're right. It took a lot of uh, soul searching. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to sign on the dotted line with some really cool people and a really great role and really quite a nice deal. And um, my husband, Rob Tapper, rang and said, uh, you know, Bruce and Sam uh, would like to bring you down for this role. How do you feel about that? And I said, yes, I am there. And I had to tiptoe out of this other deal because they're such nice people. But I was like, sorry, I, I just can't turn down. Sorry, that. Steven Spielberg. Sorry. <laughs> And just so we all know the lineage, you are married to Robert Tappert. Right, and he, he was with Sam and Bruce, and they all dropped out of graduate school. But yeah, and they made this little movie, and, and all the people that invested in that uh, dined out on Evil Dead proceeds for the rest of their lives. And in fact, their kids, because a lot of them have passed away, their kids are still getting checks, so... Um, you done good, Bruce. Wow, yeah. Now, the fans demanded more Evil Dead. I'm sure you were constantly inundated with people, your fans, wanting more Xena. Yeah. 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 
What is your response to that? I hate to be honest about this, but I probably couldn't do it. It's so physical. You've got to be really young and hungry to take the punishment. It's super punishing. But um, to do a one-off raucous comedy with the original cast would be would be the way to go, I think. I mean, Zita paved the way for future generations of female action heroes. I don't know if you have felt a lot of pressure being a feminist icon that people were like, okay, this has to be what it is, or if you bathed in it. Hmm. <laughs> I was born bathed in, you know, one of the most egalitarian societies on earth, I think. And I'm, I have five brothers, and my mother said I didn't know I was a girl till I was about eight when they broke the news. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I didn't really understand the need for feminist and egalitarian girl power role models, but uh, I, I'm getting it now. I don't think that Zena and Gabrielle's job is done. You know, there's still need for not just female empowerment, but also self-realization and uh, triumph of, of um, the individual um, against the tyranny of the many. Yeah. You know, that, that was, that was... So your role on Ash versus Evil Dead, Ruby is uh, basically Ash's enemy of sorts in yeah, this. Yeah, he, ca- he caused the death of my father, Professor Nobi, the original owner of the, or holder of the Necronomicon, Uh, My mother and my sister have been completely orphaned, and now I want vengeance. Plus, he's just released the Deadite Plague for a second time. He's that big a dunce. So it is time to eradicate him. A little window into what set's like. All right, we should put you guys uh, against each other in a game. I feel like that would be a perfect competition. So we all have our plans about how we're going to survive the upcoming zombie apocalypse. This game is about those plans. We went out and asked our audience questions about how they would handle the end of the world. And our audience is comprised of nerdy, zombie-fearing millennials. (laughs) So all you have to do is guess how they responded to the questions we asked them. Uh. Amazing. So ring in when you know the answer. If you get the answer wrong, your opponent will get the point. Mm. Yes. So it's risky. It's very risky. And the winner will receive an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube. We asked our audience, what would they do if their best friend became infected with whatever is turning people into the undead? Did they say that they would A, keep them chained up but alive? hoping to find a cure, or B, kill them humanely before they tried to eat or kill them. Bruce. Chain them up. Hope for the best. You have a kind heart, but they said kill them humanely. (laughs) 70%. All I have to do is not press this buzzer. Okay. Question 107. We asked, what is your weapon of choice to fight off the undead? Shotgun, chainsaw, or crossbow? Bruce diving right back in. Unafraid. Fear is your enemy in this game. Well, I agree with you. <laughs> and I'm going to kill these filthy creatures from a distance. Uh-huh. I'm going for that damn crossbow. Even against my own intuition. Uh, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> crossbow was about 20%. About 20% said crossbow. 20%? <laughs> these people are stupid. Well... So is it shotgun or chainsaw? It's a 50-50 chance, Lucy. Chainsaw. Uh, chainsaw is also incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, these people, the, our audience said uh, shotgun. Yeah. 53% said yeah, shotgun. Yeah, well. You know. But you, where's the fun in that? I agree. <laughs> Where, where's the fun in a zombie apocalypse, really, when you think about it? <laughs> we asked our audience to imagine they were safely ensconced in their fortified bunker when two people bang on the door begging to come in. 
One is a comedian. Oh, that old trick. <laughs> I'm One okay is... now, Ash. I'm okay. <laughs> Open the door. Everything's fine. I'm your sister. <laughs> Assuming neither one is infected, and neither one is going to kill you, necessarily. One is a comedian, and one is a musician. Who did our audience say they would take in? This is a relevant question for us in particular. Lucy, yes. The musician. I like the way you think, Lucy. And you are correct, 60%. Oh. Said, leave the comedian outside to die. Let's go to our puzzle guru, John Janeski. It was very close. <laughs> but Lucy Lawless lives to fight another day. Congratulations. Unbelievable. We are so psyched for the series. We are thrilled that you came on the show and played with us. Big hand for our Thank VIPs, you very much. Chris Campbell, Thank you. Lucy Lawless. Now we're going to crown this week's grand champion. Let's bring back Sarah, Hattie, Leah, Edgar, and Anne to play our Ask Me One More final round. <laughs> our puzzle guru, John Chinesky, will lead this round. This final round is called Art for Art's Sake. All of the answers in this round will have the letters A-R-T in order. For example, if I said... Coined in the mid-90s, this word refers to a cell phone that can surf the internet and send emails. You would say, smartphone. We're playing this spelling bee style, so one wrong answer and you're out. You'll only have a few seconds to give us an answer. Last person standing is our Ask Me Another grand winner. And for your prize, you'll receive a bag of autographed swag from Ash vs. Evil Dead including a giant foam chainsaw, which is cool looking, but not super useful. Here we go. Sarah, this cocktail made with gin and vermouth is traditionally garnished with an olive. Martini. Yes, that's right. Hattie, in the carol, The Twelve Days of Christmas, it's the one gift given on the first day of Christmas. Partridge. A partridge in a pear tree a pear is tree. right. <laughs> Leah, this pub game evolved from a medieval training exercise for archers. Darts? Darts is right. <laughs> Edgar, s'mores and brown sugar cinnamon are just two of this Kellogg's breakfast pastry's many flavors. Pop-tarts? Pop-tarts, yes. <laughs> and... Nelson Mandela fought against this South African policy of racial segregation. Apartheid. Apartheid is correct. From Pop-Tarts to Apartheid, we've got it all. Back to Sarah. This website lets users make small donations to independent artists, writers, and musicians. Three seconds. Uh -huh. Step aside, Sarah. Let's see if Hattie knows the answer. Kickstarter? Kickstarter is correct. Thank you. I have to say goodbye to Sarah. <laughs> Leah, Marilyn Monroe's last husband, he wrote the plays Death of a Salesman and The Crucible. Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller is right. <laughs> Edgar, it's a fancy term for a person who makes maps. Cartographer. Cartographer, yes. <laughs> and in ancient Greece, they were residents of a powerful city-state. But in modern times, they're the athletes of Michigan State University. Carthaginians? Not Carthaginians. Step aside for a second. Let's see who's after Anne. It's Hattie again. Spartans? Spartans is right. We'll have to say goodbye to Anne. <laughs> Leah, Francis Scott Key watched the Star Spangled Banner flying over this type of defensive wall at Fort McHenry. Three seconds. A rampart? Oh, yes. Rampart is right. Nice save. <laughs> Edgar, according to a 1985 hit song by Eddie Murphy, yes, that Eddie Murphy, his girl likes to do what? Party all the time. Party all the time, yes. <laughs> Hattie, in this Edgar Allan Poe short story, a man's guilty conscience causes him to confess to a grisly murder. 
Three seconds. Let's see if Leah knows it. The Telltale Heart. The Telltale Heart is right. We have to say goodbye to Hattie. And now we are down to two. Edgar. It's the oldest neighborhood in New Orleans, founded in 1718 by naval officer Jean-Baptiste Bienville. Three seconds. Nope. Well, let's see if Leah knows it. Leah, do you know? The French Quarter. The French Quarter is correct. Congratulations, Leah. You are our grand prize winner. That is our show. Thank you so much for playing. Check out our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. You can also find us on Facebook or Twitter at NPR Ask Me Another. And come see us live or be a contestant. Go to amatickets.org. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is John Chinesky. Hey, my name anagrams to Oh Heck Ninjas. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Now Jolta Cannon. Our senior supervising producer is Art Chung. Additional puzzle writing by Matt Foster, Travis Larchuk, Adam Markowitz, Mary Tobler, and senior writers Kyle Beakley and Dan Schofield. Ask Me Another is produced by Denny Shin, Lena Mazitzis, Mike Katzif, and our intern Julia Melfi, along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Kristen Muller, and David Hurtgen. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm her ripe begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Next time on Ask Me Another, Natasha Leone tells us how to pack for a double feature day watching her new movies, Anti-Birth and Yoga Hosers. And I like a, a sensible shoe. I always carry a spare pair of panties. Metro card, $20, ID. So I would suggest, you know, that sort of a strategy. Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, for NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Game.